Hey guys, I'm somebody who never welded before, who just learned to weld, and this is how I did it. The easiest, cheapest, simplest process. From low to high, it gets really expensive to weld, or it can be really easy. This is the easiest way. Two, like, mainstream cheap welders out of Harbor Freight that anybody could get for, like, DIY purposes, and they're fantastic. One of them is this one. This is the Titanium Easy Flux 125. And then there's a Chicago Electric 90. So they're both pretty close in power range. This one is a little bit more powerful. Bigger thing is, this one can be ran with a standard 110 outlet, which means pretty much any outlet in your household or your garage, you can plug it in. I'd recommend a 12 or 10 gauge extension just, just to give it ease of mind. If you're turning it all the way up to try and like weld some, some pretty seriously thick stuff, I would definitely turn it all the way up. Secondly, all you would need to do is check the settings. It has pretty much anything you would ever need to know on here. If you need to look up any of these things on, there are tons of people that are gonna bore you to death talking about these specific things, but really this is all you need to know. The bigger thing you need to pay attention to is this graph here. It's telling you the thickness of what it will weld. So it'll weld all the way up to 3 16th inch steel. That's a pretty big freaking deal. The gauge, right, in the settings. So wire speed, 3.54, that's the wire speed how fast you want the wire to flow through. We'll talk about that process here coming up. And the voltage, B, C, D, E, E5, F5. So it has a little bit more power past G. So I'm thinking for like tougher, whatever, it just gives you a little bit more of an option. But G is the recommended highest setting based on the graph. And you can also turn the wire feed a lot farther up or a lot slower than the wire feed, which is this. So this is, if you can read this, this is gasless flux core wiring. It's 035 thick. It's the Vulcan, that's a Harbor Freight house brand. It just feeds through this little tube. You lock and tension it here. And I already have a tension. If I take this off, it'll go and I don't want it to do that because it's very springy. So just make sure when you put it on here before you unveil it here, that you have this fairly tightened down so this doesn't just like flux everywhere. Then you want to stick it through here. Then you want to tension it down here to where the roller is tension tighten up on this without actually crushing the wire or making it too hard to, to move through. And then you would have this, and this just, there's a trigger. This is like a MIG gun or whatever you want to call it. There's the on button. It'll turn on. Here's the ground cable that completes the electric circuit. So you'd have to clamp this somewhere on the items that you were trying to weld, one or both. You press the trigger, wire comes out. Here's a random piece of steel. This is 1 16th inch thick that we've been just messing around on. Flexing gauge, four C5. So it says C to C and a half. So like between C and D could be like your optimal. We're just gonna keep it on C. Wire speed four. E welding gloves, but we're not gonna be seriously doing anything crazy, but look. Now you can prep the surface. It's better if you do, but it's flux, so you don't need to. We'll talk about what flux is in a second. So there's that. Right, we're not gonna seriously go huge into welding because I'm not prepared to weld, but just to show you how easy it is. See, okay. there's that. So fluxes. That's how easy it is to start. That was quite easy. I explained that to you in five minutes and really if I just had not explained anything, I could have done this in seconds. You turn it off, it runs the fan for a little bit to cool off the unit a little bit more, and then it shuts off completely, and then you're done with the process. A little bit more about what flux is. So any sort of wire that you're using, there needs to be something to stop it from corroding, because when it superheats the wire, the whole process, if you need to know what, what welding is, welding is you're electrifying the metal. That's why you had a ground case. So you're pretty much electrifying the metal. You're creating what's called an arc, but essentially you're just electrifying the metal. You're electrifying it to such a high heat that when the wire touches the metal, it actually penetrates and cuts away at part of the metal. And then while it cuts away at that part of the metal, the wire you're putting into it is melting and bonding and feeding in that gap, creating a solid bond. So this is quite ugly. This is like a test strip, but that's what it's doing. All these, all these runs here, that was cut, cutting and penetrating and filling. That's what that was. So parts of that is completely permanently bonded to the parent metal. And that's all this does. So but when, when wire is that hot, it starts to corrode in oxygen. Oxygen will corrode the wire in an exponentially high rate. So, so that's where you start seeing stuff like shielding gas or flux. So flux is an actual coating on the wire itself. And so you'll see that a lot on, if you start to stick weld, if you learn that process, you'll see they're just coated in flux. That means like 
when you're actually penetrating it, it's fine because it's already flux. You don't need any sort of gas to shield a stick weld. Same thing with this, it's a flux core that's got flux on it. Flux really is just the shield. Flux can be inter interchangeably used with the word shield. It's got shield on it. When you're using solid MIG wire, then you're gonna need gas. You're gonna need a 7525 um, oxygen to argon split. For like full aluminum, you need 100% argon. And for some metal processes, I think you need 100% argon or 100% oxygen, I'm not sure. Not terribly familiar with the processes because I'm not a, a professional welder, can you tell? What I was saying short about flux cores, it's amazing. The only thing that it will do is it splatters, the flux splatters and it gets on the metal. You have to grind it off or sand it off. Big freaking deal. And it does, and the other thing is it does spark a lot more. It does flash out a lot hotter and the sparks do get on you. So wear flame retardant clothing. Uh, don't wear a polyester shirt or a polyester cotton blend shirt unless you want to get lit on fire. You also need ventilation, like doing it outside. Much better than doing it in a garage. If you do it in a garage, make sure you have a garage with high ceilings or really good ventilation because the gas that's emitted from welding is not good for you to breathe in. Also, the light emitted from the welding, the super bright, that's all just UV rays. So if you do not wear a long sleeve shirt, you will get a serious sunburn. And if you do not wear a welding helmet, while you are welding, and not only will you start going blind, but you'll get what's called flash burn on your eyes, which is like the equivalent of having sandpaper on your eyes. It's extremely painful, so I've heard. Just don't look at the weld, ever, without a helmet. What is flash burn? Flash burn is pretty much a sun. Like if you just looked at the sun for an extended period of time, you wonder what would happen to your eyes? That's pretty much the same thing that happens when you look at a weld without a welding helmet. But you can probably look at the sun with a welding helmet. If you ever want to look at the sun, use a welding helmet. Cheapest one I make, works fine. Know that there's a cover over that plastic though. You can't inherently tell, but you do have to take that thing out. It kind of just, it flexes out of the, the two binding ends there. And you gotta peel that plastic off. And this plastic in the middle, in the inside, gotta, like, gotta peel that off. It works just fine. You have settings, sensitivity. I always kind of run it a little bit higher that way between welds. It doesn't flash on and then flash off because too much of that is not good for your eyes. It's like, it's like looking at a strobe light. Plus, I mean, some of the UV rays get through during those, those little peak spots. So the less sensitivity you have, the more it'll do that. You kind of want to lessen the sensitivity when you're working in the sun, but if you're in a garage area like this, you would want to max sensitivity out or run it a lot higher. For the delay, there are some processes where you want the, you know, the darkening to be delayed just a little bit. Um, for flux, you don't need it to be delayed because it's, it's instantaneous and you want your screen to go on instantaneously. If, you're, if your dark screen is lingering a little too much after you're done welding, then that's when you need to de decrease the sensitivity, decreasing the sensitivity, and then it'll pop back up to a bright screen where you can see your weld. But definitely if it's too unsensitive, it's not good because then you'll start getting the strobe light effect and it's really, really not good for you. If you're gonna do a lot of welding farther, farther around, I would get something a lot nicer like this helmet, like a Miller or whatever. Or if you can do welding in real tight spots, you wanna get one with a much wider viewfinder screen. There's some with a much view. So you're not awkwardly able to see because this thing will, will shield your neck and most of your face so it'll only bend down so much. So if you're like this underneath the trailer and your double chin sticking out and you can't quite see anything, you need a, you need a better screen. Like this one has shade, delay and sensitivity. So you can actually control the amount of shade, not just the sensitivity or, or, or the delay. Which is good because some processes are not so bright and not so crazy. And so you really don't need a whole lot of shade. This is something to think about. And then obviously different modes. So this is a Miller. So Miller is about as good as it gets. And this is one of their, their more economic helmets. They do make crazier helmets that are like 200 bucks. But the standard base one is, uh, I think about 60, 70, 80 bucks or whatever. And that's a pretty damn good helmet, for being honest. This is the one I use primarily, but that's definitely my nice little backup. And if I had to use it all day, I would. Are things you'll need a wire brush to prep. They say you need a little chipping hammer, although I've never used this thing ever. I just use a grinder with a sanding wheel or obviously grinding disc, but you can get a chipping hammer for short and it'll help you get away some of that like flux, like splatter or just like prep. It'll help you out. But it's just one of those things that's there. And some gloves. Maybe the most important thing ever, aside from the shirt that's gonna shield you from flash burn and obviously the helmet. But the gloves, these are MIG gloves. They have uh, TIG gloves, which I don't know, they, they seem to be just, they just have, they're a little thicker, a little bit more protection. TIG gloves are thinner. It's cause you're kind of like drawing with the rod. And so you need, you don't need like tight binding gloves. You need a little bit more flexibility. And it's a, I mean, and then there's no splatter going everywhere with, with TIG. But MIG and Flux Core, there's a little bit more crap going on, a lot of sparks going on and all kinds of nonsense. So just get some like thick gloves for that process. You can also get a apron, a welding apron, which will help with a lot of the flux. You're gonna not want to wear regular shoes or you'll start getting burn holes in your shoes because that's where the, the flux goes right to your shoes. You have, you'll have a million little burn marks on your feet, right in a bunch of holes in your shoes. So maybe some, maybe some boots. 
and that's all you need. I'm gonna show you right now my process and my experience from never welding to welding. I'll show you all the fails I did, some things you're gonna expect while you're doing it, ultimately to when you're refining the process and then to what it should ultimately look like as you start to get better, which is fucks cool. Let's check it out. All right, so first things first, you can just weld right on the concrete. You do not need a welding table or a bunch of these other things that they're gonna try and sell you. Are they nice? Yeah, but if you don't have room for those things, just weld it on the floor. And if you get a point where you can't like actually get the ground around a spot, then stick everything on top of like pieces of metal tubing so you have an elevated like mock floor and then you can kind of just like bind it together. There are X amount of magnets. Another thing we didn't cover is like magnets, 90 degree angle magnets that'll kind of keep everything together for you so you can just get a tack. And other than that, it's kind of like drawing. They can't show you because obviously that bright, you know, glow right there, but you're kind of scribbling like a crayon back and forth a little bit. It'll take you a little bit to get your technique. And then if the settings aren't quite right for you, um, you can always adjust them obviously right there on the machine. But the result is, you know, just a little bit of experience. This thing, this little patio fence I made for my toy hauler, it was gonna cost me somewhere close to three grand to get one made. And that welder I picked up for like 135 bucks at Harbor Freight, some flux core for a few bucks more. And I really kind of put this whole thing together for like 600 bucks. It was like an obscene savings that we got. And then just like a bunch of, I don't, I sell out to Harbor Freight. I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm a big, huge fanboy. Those are the Clevis pins from their little kits they have. They have little kits for everything. You can make anything. I love that place. If you want to see the actual full video on this project, I'll leave it up here in the iCards and in the description below. Uh, please like and subscribe and share and at least comment. If you don't like the video, then don't like the video. But here it is, guys. Thank you much. See ya.